in my expression of photography is an absolute hindrance. I find I find daylight photography challenge doable, absolutely doable. At the end of the day, but maybe out of 300 pictures, you've only got two two uh, hundreds that you can use, and of the 300 you took in the studio. So I find yeah. it I find it tiring outdoor shooting. If I'm shooting outdoors, I what I don't like is to paint the flash outdoors. I don't like doing that. It's too much stuff to carry. I can't afford assistance all the time. And then I'm carrying two cameras and a fucking light stand and a big light and stuff like that. I just can't, can't handle that. Mm. So if I'm shooting outdoors, I'm shooting natural light. If I'm in the studio, sometimes I use natural light. Yeah. If I have a nice light coming through the door, if the light's shit, no, I use flash. It, it just it doesn't matter. Lights, it, it, I will use whatever light I have to to get my shot. Now, what you're talking about is you don't like natural light because it keeps changing. Um, you just started with a mirrorless camera. When you get used to that camera, things will change for you. Because these cameras, you see your picture before you take it. So the light changes and you can see it straight away. And you can just turn your dial and go back to what you want. So, of course, that, that's easy. But it is, it is a, for me... It's a hindrance in process to manifest a concept idea you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. and I yeah. understand. This is the last thing I want to do is to handle the bloody camera. Yeah, yeah. But and I understand that you know uh, you need, you want to focus on your model, so you you don't want to think about your camera. But that's the other thing that I teach. Uh, the camera, you get you need to get to a point with the camera, and um, this is for the kind of and I'm a technical person, of course. You need to get to a point where you don't think about your camera. It's different between you and me, because technical is... But I am a technical person. I, I have a technical background. Mm. So I I am at the, the point, and I've been there for a while now, that I don't think about my camera anymore. You know, the light changes. I change with it. Yeah, okay. And I don't think about it. So, so I understand you, if you... You are more flexible as a Taurian than me as a Virgo, who's the precision dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a bit of a paradox, isn't mm-hmm. it? But you know, and that's what I've been teaching someone specifically about it. Uh, I don't think about it. I really don't think about it anymore. Mm. And that's where you want to. If you want to be a professional photographer, not you know, it's not. It's different. What I do is different from what you do. If you want to be a professional photographer, that time is money. You know. People are paying you by the hour to, to get the shots done. You need to get to the point where you don't think about your camera. Or the light changes. Or go to a studio. <laughs> it's the or, or the light. Well, there. even in the studio sometimes things change. You know, things change in the studio as well. And you need I mean, to, yeah, I mean, you need to, to adapt in a split second. You're not overly wrong because often you've experienced this as well. It's like in, in, uh, in my studio, my shed, that shed. Mm-hmm. Uh, we change lights from you know 45 degree angle up front to yeah. sideways, and then so with play of lights, play play with the shadows, play with lights, and then of course you need to re- readjust it. But it's never as drastic as, as all of a sudden the sun coming out. But then when it was cloudy before, yeah, it's annoying. It's annoying when you are outdoors shooting. When you are outdoors shooting, if it's cloudy, it's fine. If it's sunny, it's fine. But if it, if the clouds coming and going, it's a pain. Yes. That's what I experienced yes. with my, my and six, it's six not just shoot. it's not just um, the settings change, but later in post production the white balance changes. The color change. It's a, it's a thing. But you just need to you know, like when I'm outdoors shooting, uh, I, I don't even think about it. I am focusing on my model and the, the you know, what I want from the shots and I find it distracting the camera. And I, I only shoot manual. And I'm not saying everyone has to shoot manual. No, I think everyone should know how to shoot in manual. Mm. But you don't have to shoot in manual. The professional but setting works occasionally. Yeah, well, that's professional. Because it's professional if you have a camera that has a fucking flash in four seconds, that's fine. But extra priority, extra priority. Anyway, uh, you need to know how to shoot in manual. You need to know how yeah, to shoot. Okay. Even if you don't. I only shoot in manual because I don't have to think about it anymore. I know my camera as well in the same way as I know my computer as well. You know, mm. it's, it's part of me and I don't have to think about it. 
That was a long-winded answer. Fuck yeah. Mm. Uh, so did you get into gin after having your first, second or third child? <laughs> gin? Gin. Or alcohol in general. Maybe. Alcohol. <laughs> oh, that was the cure of many things that started <laughs> way earlier. <laughs> um, I've never considered myself a drinker and I still don't. Um, as, as for European, uh, is Europeans meet, we drink for taste. The effect is the bonus. Australians mm. often work the other way around. Mm. So for me, well, you, you asked the question. So for me, drinking was never a stable thing. But funny enough, also, uh, my parents, my dad was a beer drinker, but only outside the house, uh, beer, beer and wine. Wine in, in the house, beer outside, when he occasionally went to, uh, to a pub or a bar. Mm. You know, so uh, I never got into beer because I never really don't, I don't like beer. But to, and I never, I never grew up with a six pack of beer in the fridge. That was never, that's not a visual memory I have. Uh, something interesting there. Uh, my dad had a wine cellar. He had over 6,000 bottles. He was a wine collector. Mm. He had a big cellar, the natural, natural stone uh, dirt in the cellar, you know. So it was, it was, it was an old one and an old glass. It was beautiful. Um, so I never grew up with seeing beer or anything alcoholic in the fridge. So this is ment mentality wise uh, how I grew up. Uh, the drinking was never a part, uh, an important part of my life. Of course, if you go out and you work at a bar, you occasionally have a tequila. Tequila is not alcohol, tequila is a drug. Justification. Yeah. You know, um, I had a few gin tonics, but I never really liked them because I was not mature enough for them. Um, so alcohol never had a great importance in my life. And the first time coming to Australia at the age of 25, first time my then first wife, which we talked about earlier, she bought, she was, she liked beer occasionally. She bought a six pack and put this in the fridge. And I remember looking, opening up my fridge, you know, our home, our fridge, my fridge, open up, and I see the six pack of beer in there. And I looked and I said, this is not possible. That's like bogan, primitive, working class <laughs> uh, mentality to have beer at home. Beer you drink outside, you don't drink, take outside, you know, the privileges of what you can do outside, you, you have decent wine at home, but certainly not beer. So, just to, just to understand my mentality, where I came from, um, so to see beer in the fridge was like, what? Uh, so, for me, uh, alcohol was always a treat, even though it's super healthy. You know, I am not finished and become, become an indulgement. And I work in phases, you know. So if I go back in time, in my memory, I had um, a time where I drank lots of cider, because I like cider, not the sweet one. Then red wine, then white wine, only Pinot Grigio, everything else is like, you know. And then slowly gin tonic and tequila is always, uh, you know. So uh, it has nothing to do with my kids. Leave my kids out of my alcoholic problems, okay? <laughs> Fuck, you are a Swiss burger. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we had um, Ivan and the German guy <laughs> there for ping pong, and I said, Typically Italian, typical German. Stereotypes. Yes. You are a Swiss burger. <laughs> cool. Okay, Bruno, did you leave Brazil because the Aussie women are prettier? No. Next question. Do you like hairy armpits and uh, why haven't you uh, shaved yours? For myself or other people? No, on your models, girls. No. So why haven't you shaved yours? Because I'm not a model. Yeah, but equality. Equality, you know, like, balance and the decency. We can do it. I can do it right now in front of the camera. Well. I can shave mine, I don't care. It is 21st century, you know, you've got to groom and look after yourself. I think you don't want this manky kind of a... Yes! Kind of a, you know, a fish called Wonder type. No, it's not a good look. I don't care. It's like Neanderthal. I usually don't care about my looks, only my models. My Neanderthal cliche look. You practice. Do you shave your armpit? Yeah. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Oh, my God. You do. Because Why? Of, because it's the 21st century, man. You've got to go with time. 
You know, the, the monkey gorilla look, this is like a last century type thing, you know? I'm not, the, I'm so not like heavy, what are you talking about? Right, next question. <laughs> <laughs> it's my turn, you just asked two questions. What the fuck? Do you like Brian Littrell or Kevin Richardson more? Who? Ah, yeah, your favorite band, all right. Brian Littrell or Kevin Richardson? Don't, don't pretend you don't know them, I know you do. Explain who these guys are. They're from the Backstreet Boys. Backstreet Boys. The Backstreet Boys. <laughs> okay. So which one? Yeah, I don't even have to answer that. Yeah, uh, him. Brian or Kevin? Yes. Brian or Kevin? Yes, absolutely. Next question. Okay. What about this one? Justin Timberlake, Justin Long, or Justin Bieber? You know these people. Now you can't pretend. You know Justin them. Bieber. Justin Timberlake. Justin Long or Justin Bieber? Oh, not just Bieber. Bieber. J Justin Bieber. 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 Justin? My name is Case. Justin Case. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Bruno! You know that. You don't have to say my name before every question. Anymore. Bruno, why do men with glasses take longer to masturbate? Why do men with glasses take longer to masturbate? That's a good question. Do you, do you know why? Do you want me to show you? No, you're not going to show me. Yeah, I'll show you. No, you're going to show me. I'll, I'll, I'll mimic. You ready? Okay. Go ahead. Cigarette, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you going with uh, treating your anger issues? <laughs> you have some anger issues. I'm an optimist. No, you're not. Give me a Y! Give me a E! Give me a yes! Yeah! So, no anger issues. Okay. My question <laughs> You gonna get a Sony tattoo? No. <laughs> Next question. You know that I'm Ken's most unique photographer? Unique? Mm. Okay. Are you asking me if I know that? Well, I didn't know that. Uh, Are you? I'm Ken's most unique photographer. Okay. Who said that? Everybody knows. Okay. Everybody knows. Okay. If you could play as well as any big musician, who would you like to play like? Whoa! Ooh. Um... I started playing uh, piano was my first instrument. At five years of lessons. Sure, right. certainly. Okay, here we go. I did the same thing with my kids. <laughs> All three of them. Uh, it was mandatory. No, it was compulsory. Five years piano lessons as a bass. They all hated it as much as I did. But now they all play. Okay. Mainly by ear. So and then guitar is another instrument. I learned later. <laughs> you asked the question. Sure, still more. <laughs> Um, so my focus is, uh, I can appreciate a good guitar player, like, uh, Ryan Hayes of, um, uh, what's his name? Got him. Hey, incredible guitar player, but people that fascinate me is, uh, is, uh, pianists. Keith Jarrett, jazz pianist, he's, he's one of, one of my favorites. To watch him play, and the way he, he, Makes love to the piano. He's a short man, mm. so he's he's able to actually stand up and play piano. When, when I do this, I can't. So and then his body movement, as as he really plays emotionally, because he knows what he's doing. You know, he plays emotionally, and his whole body movement looks like he's he's making love to the piano. And to watch him express physically as well as um, as emotionally and melody wise, incredible. So if I could be anything like him, which I'm certainly not, but yes, uh, I have a great respect for Keith Jarrett. Oh, yeah, that was Jazz good. Pianist. Good. Yeah. Good shit. Now, my question. Uh, which ones of your strobe lights are your favorites? The strobe lights? Yes, that's photography based, no? Uh, the Godox, my, the last one I bought. 
I thought it was the little beauty dish with the... Oh, you're talking about the modifier? Yeah, yeah. Ah, no, the modifier. Sure what the extra strength. light. You well, it comes with the package, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the beauty dish, the smaller one, because you can get a bigger one. Uh, uh, I don't know how... It's a nine, no, it's 60 centimeters. How big is mine? Yeah, that's... that's, that's, that's mine's nice. bigger. No, you have a big one. Oh, yeah, 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 but mine the is... The one that I borrowed from you is yeah. the same one. I have two of those. Okay, that's same 60. Same size. Yeah, 90. 90 is too big. Yeah, 90 would be too big. I think it's a bit too big. Yeah, probably 60. Yeah, probably 60. Anyway, it's a beauty dish. Uh, Sometimes with a honeycomb bread, sometimes not. I love love the honeycomb bread. Yeah. Do you know why? (laughs) Because I showed you. Yes. Uh, I, was, I was talking about it for two years and we finally decided to try that. I had it stashed in the back because I bought a whole kit, kit of a friend of mine. <laughs> and then she goes, there's some extra hoods, you know. I said, yeah, okay, I look at this. I said, Fuck. So I put it, put it away. And it was two or three years later, digging it out from my shelves. Oh, you got that? That's a good light. Oh, yeah, really? And then I saw the results and I went like, hmm. It wasn't, it, was it wasn't until I took a photo of Yvonne. With it, that you're like, okay. Uh, it's incredible. All right, cool. um, it, it's the kind of light that I was actually, I didn't like it at first because I didn't know how to use it. You need to know how to use it. So the first what time. Do you I mean, how to use it? I, I, I used it for the first time like this. Yeah, because you, you saw how I used it. Yeah. How did you feel? In a world dominated by men, to be a white woman. <laughs> strange. <laughs> Very strange. <laughs> Took me a long time to admit, you know, there's a certain dangly part which I don't agree with, you know. Because <laughs> I was so comfortable being a man in black. But, you know, in reality. <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, Answer your question? Yeah. God, you're weird. <laughs> Bruno! Mm. Do you know that cigarettes are expensive? Yeah. Yeah. I know cigarettes are expensive, yeah. They're incredibly expensive. How yeah. much do you pay for a packet? $28. For a packet of 20 That's yes, the 20s, yeah. How many cigarettes a day do you smoke? It depends on the day. Average? It can be one, it can be 25. So you're spending how much money per day on uh, drugs? Drug? Weekly? Weekly. weekly. Daily it, it changes, but weekly? Probably the same as rent. Product placement. <laughs> Here we go. Tobacco. Smoking okay. kills. No, we'll improve your health. Quitting, our quitting will improve your health. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear that. No, it's just this bit. Um, Look, here, we'll improve your health. Uh, 45 grams. Okay. Smoking kills. Uh, I pay $92 yeah. for 45 grams, and it lasts me way longer than you. Yeah, because it takes you forever to, to prepare the fucking thing. Yeah, it's a ceremony. Let's hand it. Let's have smoking weed. It's a fucking cigarette. Voice. Cigarettes, tobacco comes from South America. And they, oh, have they all come from South America. Yeah, they, and they had smoking Like cigarettes. cocaine. <laughs> you know I've got problems smoking cocaine? Because the ice cubes always get in the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, nevertheless, but smoking is was a ceremonial act coming from South America, the uh, indigenous tribes there. So, if you roll, you sort of go back in time. No, because they, they didn't roll. So. Oh. It's like you go back in time, you know, and you actually take time to take a filter. I put it in my ear, not because I want to filter out of what you said. You and all your kids, you know that, right? Yeah, of course, we, you know, some, so much bullshit going on, you know, so it's like... And then you, you take your time. It's like rolling a joint. You don't smoke bloody uh, um, and bombs and things like that. If you ever would, should, would smoke, you just roll a joint. You take your time. It's a ceremony. It's a part of the smoking experience. So, Bruno, do you know that cigarettes are expensive? Yes. 
Ah, okay. Next question. <laughs> yeah, you lack the inspiration to pick up the camera or create any art. What do you do to pull yourself out of creative slumps? I never have. It, it, it's non-stop. You, you, never, you never had a creative slump? No, well, I had some artistic <laughs> breaks, but it doesn't, doesn't mean... It doesn't stop. It's it's, um, it's something some OCD I was born with. I don't know. It's like I see you were born with OCD. Yeah. Slightly. You know, talk to Stacy about that. Yeah, you next week. Okay. Yeah. You can't oh, go to friends who's got OCD. Oh, really? No, no, I'm gonna say I have a friend who's born with OCD. <laughs> no, it's and he's 65. <laughs> Fuck off. No, it's it's constantly it's constantly uh, active. Uh, I walk the streets and I see pictures. Uh, I see some happening, you know, people bumping into each other. I don't know what, you know, whatever goes. Uh, I also have my son very arrogant. I have the ability to recognize people, uh, the way they walk, the mannerism, to what character they, what each percent they will have. Um, so to because I was in tourism retail for 26 years. You know, to make friends in business, you've got to be able to read people. And I think I'm pretty okay with that. I'm not saying good, I'm just saying okay. And <clears throat> so... Oh, shit. Now, um, I see stories. I, I, I walk the streets, I drive the streets, I walk the shopping centers, I walk the Esplanade, the boardwalk. And so I see stories. There's constantly something going on. So I, um, I had an artistic break once. For 10 years because I was not motivated due to the artistic situation and who was in control in Cairns at the time because I had a fallout with some high level uh, uh, artists who ran big galleries and things like because I had a fallout with them because they were idiots and and, and I was not motivated to, to therefore uh, express publicly for myself I still did and I still saw pictures so, um, and I'm on a constant move of visualizing uh, experiences into a possible concept shoot. So, you get inspiration out of everything. Okay. Anything that's happening can inspire you. Of course. Because there's always a story. It might not be your story, but it's their story. With your interpretation, you then bring your feeling to it and make it more interesting, possibly. Mm. So it's always a collaboration of, uh, of energy and uh, of, of emotions. Even if you steal an image you see on the internet, uh, on Instagram, or somebody else doing this, you're inspired by the feeling you get. Maybe not what he was trying to express, but the feeling you get. And you get your own pictures you yeah. know, in your mind. Okay. So you're looking at art, but you're also looking at everyday life and everything that's happening, and you get inspired by everything. Everything is an art form, hmm. you know. So uh, yeah, the Eiffel Tower for many men is it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a power, powerful uh, um, male symbol, you know. And for others, for others, it's just a tower where you can see more. So everybody is mm -hmm. static, mm -hmm. static for some, <clears throat> and for others, it's just like. Wanting to be above the rest, but for others, the, the, the other people, is to, to be able to see more, to get a big, bigger picture. So mm. it's different interpretations. Of it was just like it was ten dollars, so I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Like, mm -hmm, you're right. <laughs> it looks cool. Ten dollars. How does it bother you to be traveling between Cairns, Brisbane, and Sydney? How it bothers me. Yeah. How does it bother you? Um. Now that you got a uh, uh, middle-aged uh, sports car, a sports car, you know, so maybe um, this is the this in two days is gonna be the first time I actually do it. The Brisbane and Sydney, I've only done Brisbane last month, flying. Uh, it bothered me not having a car in Brisbane. But now I'm driving, so I'll have my car the whole time. But I'm driving to Brisbane, I'm driving to Sydney, and then back to Brisbane, and back to Ken. Um, when I decided to move to Cairns, I knew that it was going to be my life. 
I was going to travel for work because my work is still there. Uh, it doesn't bother me. What bothers me is not having yet any work here when I'm here because I need to be working all the time. You were saying you're going to be waiting till April till after the rainy season to establish uh, for start for the photo walk 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 walk. and so on. Yeah, the photo walks. But I need to get some sort of work before that. And I, I did. I, I had that that gig with Dave. That's not what I usually do, and I love doing it. It was it was an experience. Bring him. Well, um, um, for the next one, uh, he knows I'm 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 up for it. Um, I just I don't mind the idea of traveling for work. What worries me more is when I'm here, I need to find stuff to do. There's another question quite uh, related to this, which I'm going to ask you now. Why do you like your photo walks so much? And if you don't, why do you continue? Uh, no, I, I do I do like them. Uh, they're not perfect. Um, it's not like a love story. It's not like, oh, I love them and that's it. Um, uh, there are problems, of course, things that I don't like about them. Um, I love the photo walks because one is the networking. I love the networking. Mm. Uh, I love meeting new people. You know, all these new photographers come along, and um, I love the idea that I, I get these brand new models and I train them, and they come to the photo walk and they get work after that because they're there. So this photographer's hired mentor, tutor. Yeah. So I. I I teach them just enough for them to be able to do the photo walk, yeah. uh, but then they get work from that because all these photographers will hire them. So you're a socialite? No, it's, no, look, the first ever photo walk, which Elle was there, yeah. by the way, back in 2019, I charged only $30 per photographer mm. because I just wanted to be able to pay the models. Um, because my whole idea was like, how can I help the models get work when there's not a lot of work for models? That's why I did it the first time, and then I started charging more because it's a lot of work to, to organize them. Um, I love the networking, I love helping the models. and It's a kind of social work. It is, and I love the fact that these photographers get to practice. Yeah. They come to these events to practice the, the portrait photography, uh, the, the angles, uh, how to talk to a model. They can, especially if people are just starting out, they don't know how to talk to models, so it's a good environment. It's a strange thing to say. But, but it's socially true. inadequate? Socially it, it's true. Most people who try to get into photography and portrait and fashion actually don't know how to talk to people. I mean, it's, it's a cliche. You say it behind the camera. As they come forward, but it's <laughs> true, you know, it's true, it's true, they don't know how to. Uh, so it's a good place to do that and to watch other people doing it as well. There's been like 40 photographers, but you're also selling a character, you're selling yourself, and not, not yeah. everybody can be you, yeah. You know, yeah. When, when it comes to how to talk to models, how to model no, but the photo models. walks, I don't teach, I just organize it, I move people around. That's all I do, okay. Okay, I don't teach workshops, is different, I'm teaching. Uh, some workshops I'm teaching how to talk to models, some are not. Such a strange thing to say, how to talk to models. It's but like talk to anybody. No. It's like look, for me, yeah, it's like yeah. I need to be friends but with the models because I don't shoot strangers. But so I remember when I... There's aspect there, you know, which is why is it so hard for, 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 for people to, to have a social aspect of no, the No, I, I am a very social person, okay? But I remember when I was when I started shooting with models, so I was worried. Your lifestyle. I was worried as well. I'm like, I was 36 when I started shooting with models, and I was concerned about like, like a motivational talk. What? Are you selling? Are you selling a character? Selling a lifestyle? Yeah, but my worry was like, okay, I need to shoot with this model, and they're usually like 18, and I'm a 36 year old yeah, man that's from that's Brazil. Young. What? the hell do I have in common with these people? How am I going to have a conversation with them? I don't even know what they like. 
so that was a worry that I had. Backstreet Boys. That was a worry. Now they don't. They don't even know Backstreet Boys. <laughs> <It's too old. laughs> they don't even know Backstreet Boys. Uh, but it was a worry that I had, and it wasn't until I decided to put myself out there and try that I'm like, oh, this is stupid. Mm. You always have something in common with anyone. You can mm-hmm. always find that. Yeah. You just need to, you know, you need. To, and and now look at me. I'm like most of my friends, uh, I, I'm 40. Most of my friends are between. 18 and 25, or uh, like over 55. I have very few friends on my age range. You know, it's just, it's just stupid to think these things, but we think these things. You know, we, we like, for me, it's we very worry strange. about this for stuff. It's very strange just... to hear how to talk to models. You know, like it, like if this is an issue, but for some uptight. But for most people, it is. 